Welcome back. This is, I'm John MacArthur, President of Walden Technology Partners. We're here at IBM Storage Edge 2012. I'm joined with, uh, with uh, David Floyer, co-founder of Wikibon, on, here on SiliconANGLE TV. And our guest uh, now for this segment is Tim Harvey. Tim, uh, you are the CEO of Perimeter E Security. Security. And uh, so tell us a little bit about Perimeter. Great, well Perimeter is uh, a leading provider of cloud-based security solutions and managed services to mid to large enterprises. We provide uh, a complete set of services around secure email. So we actually will host your mailbox, a combination of either our own commercial messaging technology or hosted exchange. And we surround that mailbox with a complete set of security solutions from email hygiene, encrypted email solutions. We have a, uh, a product that's a, one of the leading products in the market for compliance archival solution. And then on the other side of our business, so we focus on really secure communications, providing that uh, mail infrastructure in the cloud for customers that want to get out of their own infrastructure, move it to the cloud. Our value prop is pretty simple. We can offer a more secure, reliable email box and security around it at 50% less the cost of what uh, a customer can do it in-house. And, and who's your target customer? So these are mid to large enterprises, uh, compliance oriented businesses. Uh, we have customers like United Airlines, uh, Farmers Insurance, all the way down to uh, retail customers like Chick-fil-A. Are you in the, uh, no, the government? Uh, you probably, are you doing any government work? We do no? some state and local, not yeah, on the federal not side. Federal. Uh, state of Oregon is a large customer of ours, where we would uh, manage up to fifty-eight thousand employees for uh, the state of Oregon. Yeah. And what brought you to IBM Edge? Uh, we are really have made a big investment in IBM infrastructure technology, specifically on the storage side. We use a combination of the N series as well as. Uh, the new uh, Storewise V7000 product. Mm -hmm. In fact, I spoke yesterday in the main tent on some of the benefits that we're seeing as a result of that implementation. Yes, I was there at the presentation. So. Very good presentation, very Thank interesting, you. yes. So, can you can you say the reasons, uh, you, you did some of the work on uh, compression in particular yes. uh, uh, with the V7000. Mm -hmm. Can you say what you found uh, for the audience? Uh, with your implementation? Yeah, so we, uh, <clears throat> when you look at our storage requirements, um, the mailbox and then the compliance archival associated, today we're, we're over two petabytes of data that we're managing, and that's growing at a rate of almost two terabytes a day. And so us, uh, the ability to uh, offer that value proposition that I talked about earlier about being able to do this at 50% of the cost that a customer can do it, we're looking for something that would uh, give us reliability and uh, compliance, but do it at a cost and price point. We think that uh, when we fully implement the V7000 store-wise, we're looking at almost a 50% savings over any other technology out there because of things like the dedupli deduplication, the management capabilities, the, the replication facilities that we can go to as a result of that. So right. we're pretty excited about the technology. That's that's fantastic. So, it, were you a beta customer of the technology, or? or well, I think in, in, we're we're not necessarily a beta, but we are certainly an early adopter when we look at some specific right. software around the management of the of the product line and how we're implementing it right. with an active passive uh, uh, orientation, replicating data centers. We have our uh, our ma major data center in which is in Denver, Colorado, and then our backup facility is in Jersey City. And so with some of the replication capabilities that we're implementing around the Tivoli product line, uh, again, the, the savings is not just in the raw storage, but in the operational overhead associated with managing uh, what is a pretty complex environment. So this is, this is an active, active implementation. Yeah, that's right. Can you? Can, what's the topology there, and how does that how does that benefit your customers? So, so you know, uh, one of the things that our customers are counting on, we deliver one of the most mission critical applications that a Absolutely. customer has today. Mail. Yeah. It's got to yeah. be available. You know, it's 24 Everyone. hours a day, seven days a week, 365 yeah. days a year. The CEO is the first to know. Absolutely, <laughs> and he <laughs> will. First to call. And so, 100% reliability and 100% uptime is something that we actually have to guarantee to these customers. And, uh, uh, and it's not only security, but it's reliability. And to be able to implement an active-active or an active-passive based on those requirements is critical 
to, uh, to to the success that we've had to date. And, the, and you use the SVC for that, or you use the NetApp? How, how do you implement that? Yeah, yeah. so it, we, we so it, it, again, it's a fairly complex implementation of the environments that we're using. We have our compliance archival solution where we actually have the capability of archiving mail anywhere and being able to access that mail. So depending on a customer's implementation, we can do uh, the combination NetApp with our archival uh, N-series stuff, or we can use the Active Active with the V7000. And so we want to give our customers flexibility to Good offer choice. both those solutions. Yes, yes. And what's the, what's the business benefit to your customers of the Active Active solution? <laughs> the, I, again, it's an uptime guarantee, 100% failover. Right. type of thing. So regardless, again, we get the redundancy both from our MPLS network and actually being able to run mail active active with, you know, virtually no interruption. Um, um, what are the performance implications of that for your customers? <coughs> how, how do they, how does it turn out for them? Yeah, no, it's, it's actually, you know, mail the 2010 environment in particular is a pretty stable environment today. So while, you know, there are always issues associated with that, uh, again, having this active active implementation, I, we virtually can guarantee 100% uptime. That's fantastic, yeah. yeah. So, um, uh, what, what were the main reasons that you've, you've picked IBM as a, as a partner in, in all of this? Well, I think the, the first part was the, the infrastructure solution set. I think the second part was the, their services offering around that. And again, being able to work with us to basically in this topology and architecture and to be able to provide the flexibility of different options and utilization, how we implement the technology and giving us the opportunity to uh, have a lot more flexibility than we think we can get with a lot of the, uh, the other vendors that we looked at. So what are your future plans with, with IBM? What, what, what's the next challenge down the line that you're working on to reduce costs? Right, so we, uh, we're looking uh, at the pure systems implementation. We yeah. think that really has a lot of opportunity for a customer like ours, a rapidly growing um, managed cloud-based security managed service provider, and the, the ability to put bundle together hardware storage and software and be able to ship that, that we could then you know, move into our cloud and be able to provision uh, very quickly has a lot of attractiveness to us. So we're, we're going to follow that development very keenly. So um, can you talk a little bit more about the attractiveness? What, what, yeah, what, I, what I, the I think the, the combination of the, 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 the ability to implement quickly is probably one of the things. So we're adding customers at a rate of, uh, you know, a, a, we'll add 100,000 users this year. So pr uh, call it 10,000 a month. To be able to scale that as we go and provision those customers and to do it basically uh, you know, almost in real time, we can place an order and have it shipped to us in a, in a week or two where all we're doing at that point is loading our applications onto a completely uh, pre-configured uh, hardware software storage environment. Uh, uh, again, we think that has tremendous value. So where does that save you? Yeah, we, we have yet to calculate that savings, but it's certainly in terms of time, it's 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 uh, it, it certainly seems to be a big big impact to us. Mm -hmm. uh, we we haven't gone down that path yet, but uh, again, we think that's uh, very attractive. And we're following very closely the rollout of the pure systems. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. So you, you've based the whole system on 2010, is that another benefit that they can get to the latest version of uh, the software? Yeah, and, and again, we're working closely with, uh, with the Pure Systems Group to look at what that configuration exactly would look like. The other opportunity that we're looking at is the IBM Cl Smart Cloud, and an implementation of, of that uh, we think has a, a lot of opportunities for us potentially. And again, not only do we leverage IBM infrastructure, IBM actually also resells our solution set. Out oh, okay. Market. So, right. um, the it's IBM, a win-win. Uh, it's a, it's really is yeah. a win-win type opportunity for us because that obviously, as IBM sells more of our stuff, it requires us to purchase more from IBM. <laughs> it's funny how that works. <laughs> that sounds a, tr a tremendous business uh, <laughs> relationship. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. So, again, looking ahead, what are the what are the what are the things that you've learned from Edge, and what are the things that you are really would like IBM you know, to be working on over the next couple of years to keep you competitive? Right. Well, I think yeah, this conference has been very good for us because it gives us an opportunity to you know, talk to other customers, first and mm -hmm. foremost. It also gives us the opportunity to look at where IBM is going 
and uh, quite frankly, we've been able to work very closely with them and have some influence on that roadmap. So that's also important to us, that they understand our requirements. And, and again, we view this as really a strategic partnership that offers us and our customers a competitive advantage in the marketplace. So I think this has been a great opportunity. A any specific things that you would really like to see out there? Any well, push on technologies? I, I think uh, you know the pure systems opportunity, this concept of bundling hardware, software, and storage, pre-configuring it. Uh, again, we, we think that is a home run for, for both IBM for a company like ours. Could you see yourself as 100% uh, in that uh, type of scenario or, or won't it fit everything? Yeah. Uh, you know, again, well, w there is that potential. And certainly if, if we can look at things like operational overhead, reduce some floor density in our, our, our data centers and the price performance that uh, we think it has, it could be, again, a very attractive opportunity for us as we go forward. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and again, one of the things that's important to us is security and compliance because our, in addition to our customer base that we talked about earlier, we also support about 1,800 banks and credit unions. And as a result, we're actually supervised or regularly <laughs> reviewed by the FFIAC. Uh, so security, compliance, uh, being able to document uh, and adhere to strict processes and controls, the more simplified that is, it's easier for the auditors to come in and validate our environment. So that also, the pure system concept around simplicity that IBM talked a lot about over the last couple of days, is very attractive to us so, for so that who get, perspective. So who gets the compliance? Is that IBM or you or in combination? So, so it, the, the environment that gets validated is our environment. Right. But by having a, a simplified, easy to use, single pane of glass configuration that we can validate, it allows us to reduce our workload and as a result prove to our regulators is, that the environment is secure and, and the processes for updates, patching, are all in place and simplified. Excellent. So today, it is a multi-million dollar effort for us, uh, overhead associated with that regulatory supervision, that if we could reduce that, that also has value to us. Are there other application areas that you sort of uh, look interesting to you, places where you think you might be able to play? Yes, yeah, so the, the whole, uh, one of the, if you look at the applications that are moving to the clouds, the first, one of the first applications has to be mail. And, and if you look at the biggest hindrance to people moving to the cloud, especially as you go up into the enterprise stack, security. So, and then, uh, then the tie-in with mobile, obviously, is an important part. So how do, you how do you provide more security around these cloud-based concepts, whether it be in a shared or public or private environment? And then this whole communications infrastructure, how do you secure it from you know, the device discovery through uh, device management all the way up to the mail? So, and then the whole social media stuff. Uh, again, compliance is a big part of what we do. So how do you archive uh, instant messaging? How do you archive your social media communications with your customer? We're doing a lot of work in that area as well. We had an interesting discussion yesterday about uh, cleaning up uh, from a data spillage. And I, um, <laughs> That's a great I, phrase, I, by I, the way. I love that <laughs> phrase, actually. I, I really like that. So, so uh, I don't know if you have a practice area in we that. We do. In fact, we're, we're developing, it's a great point, we're developing application, taking a lot of our email security technology and adapting it into, we call it data loss prevention. Well, so da yeah, so I, everybody talks about data loss prevention, that's sort of locking down the borders. But once that DLP misses, misses right. how do you do the cleanup? And that was the, that was the interesting uh, an interesting angle for me. So, uh, do you see an opportunity for you yeah, there? We, we do, and again, without going too far down the pike, we, we can talk more about that in the future, but okay. we're, we're going to make some announcements over the next couple of months that, again, is going to extend what you, uh, how you think about DLP today. Yeah, yeah, so for those of you who haven't sort of heard that uh, phrase before, D, uh, uh, data spillage is when that leak of your data happens <laughs> in an internet uh, environment. How do you bring how, it back? How do you <laughs> well, how do you, uh, you're, you'll probably never eliminate all of the spillage, 
but you'll at least want to clean up to the 80% level, at least to the BP standard. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you'll want to at least uh, do some, uh, some, some, some nice press releases regarding how clean the Florida beaches are now. So uh, we, we are here in Florida. Uh, we're at uh, IBM Edge 2012. I'm John MacArthur, president of Walden Technology Partners, here with David Floyer. And our guest is Tim Harvey. Uh, and we're talking about uh, compliance and email and uh, as a service. And uh, appreciate you joining us today. Thank you very Thanks. much. We'll be, uh, we're going to take a you. short break, and we'll be right back. Great. Thank you. Thank you.